So it'd be really nice to add this number from the request session to our nav bar. So we can do it in different views, but how do we actually see it in our nav bar for all of the requests that we give? So every time we go to a different page, uh, it's gonna show our number for the cart, right? So it'd have a cart up here and, and then an item number for the number of products within that cart. And then also we wanna make these links actually work. Um, so what I'll do is first off open up home or navbar.html and then in the brand I'm going to add the link for home. So curly back brackets percent and then URL single quote home percent curly brackets. Okay so that is coming from home right here. So that's going to that view that's going to take it there every single time. And then now we already did this search form so we can leave that as is. And then default, I'm gonna change this to cart. And then I'll add the URL for cart, so URL cart. And then um, I'm gonna actually leave off static, ho static home and keep that one off. And then actually, I'm going to also just put one for just products. And we will have it go to products all. All right, so let's copy that. And then we will go in here and go URL products. All right, so that's the URL name. And that's how those all work is with the URL name. All right, so now if we go back in here, we can click on cart, it takes us cart. We can click on the brand, it takes us home. We can click on products, it'll take us to the product list, which we still have to improve. Uh, but now the navigation's at least a little bit better than it was. All right, so now we wanna add that cart number there. Now, if you've worked with Django before, you might be used to just doing request.session dot and then whatever the um, key that we set for the session. So in views, we look at this one. This is the key. So we can grab that key and put it in here. And do a refresh and we see I have a cart. So I do have products in here, but I don't have a number showing up. There's no number showing up. And this has to do with the default context processors for the template. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually copy this thing right here and we're gonna open up our settings file. And in here, I'm just gonna go right below use TZ, put it equals to all of this and separate things out a little bit, tab them in. All right, so now we have these context processors but we still need to add the request. So these are the default ones. Uh, the only reason I'm bringing the default ones in is because I don't want to override anything. So I'm just going to leave actually importing all the default ones in and then add in our other one, which is the context processor for request. So if I copy this, you can just go to Django. It's exactly like these. So we can just copy one of these and put request at the end. All right, so now that we have that request, we should be able to grab our session variable. So if I refresh in here, I see that that number two actually comes up by just adding in that request. And that has to do with the context processor. So what a context processor is, is when it's loading through uh, a template, it's gonna process all the context, right? And if we add in request in there, it will actually work. As you also notice, we have static in there, which loads our static files that we've seen, auth for our auth user. And now with um, request being in there, we can actually use uh, request.user as well. So if request.user is authenticated, one thing that we could do is if request.user is authenticated, then we can show a new link. So and if, and let's do one for eventually for an account, right? So let's just put a hash for now because it's not going to do anything. And then we'll say account. And if we refresh in here, request that user is not authenticated. So it's not showing up. Okay, so let's actually log in with admin. Log in. And now it shows up. All right. Another way to do that is since we have auth installed in our context processors right here, we can just use user .authent is authenticated. So those are two different ways of how to actually do that part. 
Uh, so we leave it as just user because it's a little bit um, more concise. So now we have this. Um, let's actually turn it into a badge. So let's actually open up getbootstrap.com. And we're going to add a badge. So it looks a little bit better. And we're going to go into components and then go into badges. And what badges do is add a number in there. And that's what we'll do is we're just going to copy this right here. And I'm going to add it in next to cart. Change out the numbers. So now I have a span with the badge in it. So if we refresh in here, now it shows me the actual cart. So I can actually click on the cart and it's there's a number in there. Uh, if I remove things, it shows that it's removing. It does it in real time. Uh, we could also change it to where if it's zero, it's just not going to show anything. But we might as well just have it show zero, right? Um, so let's actually log out and see what it shows if there's nothing in there. And there's no cart item, right? So there's nothing actually in the cart. But if we add stuff, it will show that. And if we remove it, it will show it. So uh, perhaps if there's no session, we'd want to always have it to be zero. Uh, but that's really not that necessary at this point. But there would be a way. You could just do it on, on a view or when that user first gets there is to actually add a session of zero. Or if request.session total, we could just do if not request.session item total zero and then else request dot session dot items total and if all right so now if I add a product see the session working okay so if I log out or log in and then log out to end the session basically I still see zero. So that's how you do that. Um, all right. So now that we have that, we've kind of, it's kind of a little bit more user friendly and um, it, it also indicates whether or not items are in the cart, right? So in this case, of course, it's zero. Um, so if we go back into our main homepage here and add an item, we can see it now being in there. Cool. So in the next one, we should actually start making it where this add to cart button. It's a little bit smarter. It doesn't just add one product to that cart. In fact, it adds the product and maybe some variances of the product. So like maybe a different color or something like that or quantities. All right, so in the next one, we will actually do that.